Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Finance Minister Praveen Godan released what was arguably South Africa's most closely watched budget in over a decade. Terence Creamer joins me fresh from the media lockup to discuss the highlights. Hi Terence. Hi Shanali. Was the difficult fiscal and economic context fully reflected in the budget? Yes, I think uh, it was. I think there was a, a reflection both on the global environment and how that's volatile and changing all the time, but generally a lot of headwinds from that. As we can see with the com commodity prices having fallen so much, China having slow, and that's had a major impact on South Africa's resources sector in particular. But generally our exports have, are down, our currency's taken a knock. So, so that, that was definitely a, a reflection. I think the, the minister in a media briefing uh, associated with the budget also used the word that, the, that there was an acceptance of that we're in a crisis sort of mode as a country that not only, not only business and outsiders and opposition parties are saying that, but within government, we have to respond to a very much changed context to what we've had for the, the last few, uh, few years. And uh, uh, arguably, uh, over the, you know, since the 1990s, there's been a steady improvement in terms of our, our um, fiscal balances, and that's really started to deteriorate in fo following the big global recession of 2008-2009. And we were meant to be in a recovery phase, and we just haven't really recovered. And we're actually are into a, a much deeper uh, crisis than we've been for many years on the economic front. And then obviously there's, there's these domestic issues that we shoot ourselves in the foot or we score our own goals. And that was also reflected, uh, the, the mentioning of, of how the RAND reacted to the firing of Mkhlant Lenny did, did uh, come up. Um, in fact, uh, the minister made specific reference to Clint Lenny and holding his line in many ways and actually tightening that line in his budget speech, which was interesting. And uh, I think there was this feeling that, you know, unless we've got to make some difficult decisions and we're going to make some t uh, difficult, take some difficult actions, but if we do it uh, more in partnership, we can probably uh, show some, I think the word was resilience, uh, both on the budget and fiscal side, but as an economy which is currently underperforming. What were some of the main takeaways from the budget and the minister's address? I think the, the issue of uh, fiscal consolidation and prudence was the overarching theme. Now, there was a lot of expectation that uh, to, to get the fiscal balances right uh, and present that to the rating agencies. Now, we must remember the rating agencies have had us on negative watch. We won uh, one notch above going, uh, one notch above investment grade. So if we slip from that, will go into sub-investment sub grade or junk, and the next big rating decisions will come during the next few months uh, in mid-year. Both uh, Standard Poor's and Fitch have, have put out uh, negative not notices, and, and Moody's is not far behind. So we really are on the brink, and I think uh, how do we manage that fiscal balance? Well, there's only really two ways. You have to cut spending and raise taxes. Now, uh, Pravin Gordon did both. He raised taxes to the tune of 18 billion, and he cut uh, expenditure f uh, for the 2016-17 year uh, to the tune of 15 billion. Now, I think the, it was surprising in some senses because uh, the narrative prior to the, uh, the budget release was one of that we're going to see some major changes to the tax system. There was even talk about VAT going up. There was talk about personal income tax going up. Um, I think uh, there was also this view that you know things like that were a little bit of holy cows. We've already got social unrest at universities with fees must fall. Do we really want a, a VAT must fall type protest? So there was also that pushback. But there was a feeling that there's going to be uh, something uh, quite large and uh, clear in the budget. But I think uh, in terms of tax increases, but I think uh, the minister showed his experience, his guile, his agility and his knowledge of the system by actually definitely getting the, the 18 billion, but doing it in a more uh, uh, sort of uh, at the fringes, uh, if you, uh, you know. So rather than announcing personal income tax increase, we see a, quite a major increase in the fuel levy of 30 cents. But they're doing this at a time when the fuel prices should be falling because the rand has recovered somewhat and the fuel prices haven't, uh, they've, st they've remained low. So we might not, you know, so we might, won't see the benefit as motorists, but we might not feel that it's a, a huge pain taking an extra 30 cents, but we'll have to wait and see how people respond to that. 
And then there's also a number of other elements that are being introduced. Uh, capital gains tax both on individuals and on businesses is changing that, that uh, formula and they're looking to raise about two billion there. The usual sin taxes are coming through and um, what was interesting in this budget as well that we uh, for the first time announced that there's going to be a tax on sugary drinks. So we so it's not going to come in this year but there's going to be work that's been done over the next year. So from April 1, 2017 uh, that, that tax will come in. And then there were a number of environmental levies and taxes that were also, will also rise uh, from this budget. So definitely gets his, the tax side uh, with some agility, some experience, some guile. He gets that, uh, he ticks that box for the rating agencies. On the other end, the, the pinch point is the, uh, the spending cuts. Now they're, they're relying a lot on the lowering their compensation budget, that's the wage bill. That is the big ticket item in the budget. And uh, there I think they're looking at various mechanisms, uh, mostly natural attrition and freeze on hirings and things like that, to, uh, and um, ensuring that, um, that non-essential uh, posts don't open up across government systems, so it's not national departments only, but also at the uh, uh, provincial and local government, to try and really you know, uh, have a much more streamlined um, uh, civil service. So the wage bill was expected to grow at a certain rate because we've had that above inflation wage increase and plus inflation is rising and it's inflation linked so it's a, it's a, it could be a nightmare element. But uh, what the budget outlook for the three years is instead of it going up by 8.4% we're looking at more of a sort of 7.4% up trajectory. So the balances um, on those two fronts uh, I think that's how he sort of squared that circle. It's a difficult one. It's going to be interesting to see all the reaction. But I think that we didn't see the big sledgehammer approach to the fly. Well, it's not a fly. It's a, it's a really thing. But it was more of a, a targeted, a surgical approach that uh, Pravin Gordon took, especially on the tax side. And I think made uh, the point that you know we didn't want to implement tax changes that could also be uh, deleterious to the growth environment, which is really South Africa's big problem. Has enough been done t for South Africa to avoid being downgraded to junk? I, I, I'm not sure of that. As I said, it was, uh, was nimble-footed and agile. Whether it's enough uh, to appease the rating agencies, whether they, they're going, like, they are going to see, we're well, going to see the, the fiscal deficit decline uh, much more rapidly than we outlined in October under the medium-term budget uh, policy statement. Um, uh, so in the outer years, we are seeing a lot more um, uh, tightening and then we also made a I think a line in the sand around our debt and uh, I think our debt was going to peak at close to 50% just below it's around 49% and uh, Pravin Gordon announced that uh, we're going to make sure it peaks earlier and at, at, at a lower rate which is around 46% of GDP which is still a high amount and if you look at the budget uh, our debt servicing charge is now the fastest growing item on the budget. So that's the money we have to spend to service the debt we've taken out to do to fund the gap. And uh, that's now 129 billion this year. And it's going to go to grow to 179 billion over the next three years. And it's growing at about 11.4% every year. So if you compare that to education, even higher education, which got obviously a fillip um, this year because of the fees must fall protests, even that's not growing at that sort of rate. It's more like the 7 8% type level. Even health, all those other um, uh, components are also growing more in this sort of 7% type levels. So it's a very big portion of our budget. They st uh, I think the, the, the documents s suggest that 12 cents in every uh, fiscal rand spent is now going to debt servicing. So I think that's, that line in the sand was an important uh, indicator for the rating agencies. But I think it's going to have to be a package deal. I think the budget is one element. The state of the nation was the other, showing that there's political will. So the budget shows the numbers. But the next part of the package is to go to the rating agencies with uh, business in tow and business on board. And I think that was the other big theme uh, of this budget, that I think for the first time there was a lot of consultation with business ahead of this budget. Um, and a lot of the consultation really focused on what needed to be done um, to avoid the downgrade. And I think we'll see follow up in that, on that in the form of maybe uh, businessmen being part of Treasury roadshows to the rating agencies. 
we also announced, uh, the budget also announced that there's different joint projects that business besides dealing with the rating agencies and the immediate threat of a downgrade, also to approach uh, things jointly, say on small business, a small business fund, dealing with cleaning up the whole tendering system and the procurement system and making it more corruption free with businesses' help. And then, you know, also in trying to improve the investor climate and investor environment led by domestic fixed investment, possibly in partnership with state-owned enterprises which was the, I'd say, the last key theme of the budget, which was state-owned uh, com uh, companies are no longer seen as sacrosanct. And I think we saw that um, mostly in the form of not announcements on privatization, but in the, the willingness to engage in a different model around state-owned enterprises, co-investment, public sector, uh, private sector participation with, with uh, state-owned companies like Transnet and Eskin, and then most importantly, the SAA and SAX, um, uh, developments uh, at South Africa Express where uh, there's a view that we should merge these two entities. There's going to be work on that and there needs to be a new board in place because I think the credibility of the current one is uh, highly questionable. And once that process uh, evolves and we have uh, uh, maybe a strategy with permanent executives that are highly rated, hopefully, um, able to, to put forward a proposal, there might be a, an opportunity for a minor minority strategic equity partner. He did emphasize minority. He did emphasize the, that way, not doing any wholesale privatization. But he also said that nothing is uh, nothing around state-owned companies is sacrosanct, and they will be reviewing the full portfolio. You must remember there's hundreds of these entities. We know the big ones. We know the SAAs. We know the ESCOMs. We know the prices. But um, there's a number at the provincial uh, government level a lot of these, the mandates aren't clear, the developmental impact is very unclear. And uh, a lot of these can either be uh, maybe better, better positioned in the hands of a private uh, um, uh, owner, um, or maybe even just closed down because they become a burden on those provincial governments. So I think we are going to see a lot of action in that space. And we finally have <laughs> the release of the presidential review into state-owned enterprises, which was done by General Priya Pieche before she became a general, that's long ago, but it now has been released by the president, and that's going to form the framework for the changes that, that are to come in the state-owned enterprises space, which I think is, is going to be a big target. So I think a question of, is it enough for the rating agencies? On its own, I'm not sure, but as part of a package deal uh, and a good salesmanship, and <laughs> I think we did see good salesmanship today, um, I think it could be enough. Thanks. That's the second take show. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.